well you have your you have three simultaneous equations so um three simultaneous equations three unknowns so your three unknowns are a the all the accelerations so a b and and then t your tension so in order to a convenient way you you need to solve for t so convenient so you need to get rid of the um the accelerations so one way of doing that is the middle equation with the movable pulley always has your average one so that's like by multiplying bo both sides by two you get basically like an a plus b so it's like a combination of the accelerations so make the other ones look the same as well whereby you can add uh, a factor by a and the same factor by b here so we multiply them so that you get that so as you can see here it does not to the first one so 6ma the third one 6mb and then if you're adding those together you'll get an equation that looks like this guy so then you can get rid of tension or sorry you can get rid of the accelerations and just have tension um tension values in your equation and then you can get your your tension result then from that so that was a reasonably okay question i don't think that was too much of a problem um, I think the the tricky bit was this first part A, which is not normally the case. Normally part A is the easier one. But, um, okay, so this block of mass A and smooth plane, the first part was fine. It was standard acceleration of B. So that's quite straightforward. A smooth inclined plane, so you didn't even have friction. So you just have your standard uh, weight down here, tension going along there. Solve it for both of these guys and get your acceleration of b which will be the acceleration of a as well while they're free flowing well system is released from rest they start at rest so system release from rest is telling you basically that they're starting with u is equal to zero which is fine so find the acceleration of b that's pretty straightforward um that is the standard um, procedure that we do for all of these kind of things and we get what did i get here i think a is a fifth and then tension is equal to 8 mg so that's grand so you get the um the acceleration of b okay so then you get this cryptic kind of question the time that b b remains in contact with the floor okay so really this is where they're testing you to think about what's going to happen here so there's a sequence of things that are going to happen and what's happening here is so drawing it out again you have this guy okay a you have your pulley and you have this so what's going to happen straight away and i think you're told the system is re released from rest yeah well you're not but okay so your acceleration of b you're given that or no you you find that in the first part so acceleration of b it will then it will accelerate and go down to the floor it's you're told it remains in contact with the floor so you're basically told that that will go downwards it might necessarily have been the case there are some situations where you know you all you never really know from the start which way it's going to go you can kind of intuitively guess sometimes but remember the maths will work that out for you because if you find if your positive direction is there and your b was negative it would imply that b is accelerating upwards but in this case it is you're told it's going to hit the floor so it's it's telling you pretty much a clue that it is going to accelerate downwards and that is the case your a b turns out to be positive okay so what's going to happen is you're going to have one phase which is that this starts from zero and then its acceleration is a b and it goes through this distance 24.5 once it's there then it hits the floor so what happens then once it once it hits the floor well you then have this has shifted up somewhere to the here it's been dragged up here so let's say it's here it's here now and so because this has moved down that's been dragged up a bit 
That has hit the floor. So now what happens is, from now on, this has a certain amount of momentum. That can no longer move anymore. But this block A has a certain amount of momentum in this direction, and it keeps moving. So now there's a new phase of movement, whereby it keeps moving, even though this is no longer moving. Now remember, in the normal mode up here, you your connected particles, so the tension here in the string is equal to tension here, because the tension is taut. So you're told, and usually we kind of ignore these things, but you're told, um, uh, smooth plane connected by a light in sensible string. Okay, grand. Yeah, and so it's taut. So in other words, the tension is full on this. But then once it hits the floor, this string is no longer taut. It's now moved. Once this moves up, there is no longer any tension in that string. That string is now because this is moving up without that moving down. So that string is like, is kind of like buckling on itself, really. It's, it's normally it will be pulled by this one going down, but there's no more movement in B. So it's starting to fold in on itself. In other words, there won't be any tension in the string pulling it on. All it's doing is the, the momentum is keeping it going. So whatever acceleration B was at, it starts at that acceleration A, and then it starts to slow down. Um, so there's no tension pulling it up, it's just going to, because it has an initial velocity and it was accelerating, it's going to continue that for a certain amount. Then, so it's going to continue going up until a certain point where that, uh, it starts to slow down to, the, to zero. Okay, so now we've it up right at the top. It's now right at the top. Um, this string is now not taut anymore. There's no tension in it. A is now stopped here. So it's, it, it, it runs out of steam. And then what happens? It starts to slide back down. So it starts to slide back down until it comes down to a point at which this string is now taut again. And we'll start to pull that back up. So the question is, and that's not necessarily, I mean, they're leaving quite just open there for you to figure that out. So once, so if B will be in contact with the floor, from the moment when it accelerates up here in the normal mode, from the moment it hits the floor, it's going to be, remains in contact with the floor while A keeps moving under its momentum and burns out to the point which it's it's stationary and then it's still in contact B is still in contact with the floor A starts sliding back down until that string becomes taut and at that point B starts moving up and the contact with the floor ends okay so that just takes a little bit of thinking about so the maths of that um let's just have a look at what they've put in for that Okay, so acceleration B, that is perfectly fine, the first bit of it. Um, standard equations, so for, um, for uh, A, it is 10, uh, block A, it's 10 mg minus T. Sorry, this is not A, that's B. Of course, they couldn't put that on the solutions, they meant. That would be beneath them. So that is B. So it's 10 um, G minus the tension is equal to the acceleration by with the mass. Acceleration A. This guy is T pulling it up minus 10 mg multiplied by sine of that angle, which is, uh, or is it sine? Let me see. It will be sine, yes. So three, which is three fifths, and that's 10 A. That's quite simple, very simple. Two simultaneous equations, two unknowns, gives your acceleration out, which is g over five. Yeah, I had one over five. I meant g over five earlier, sorry. Then, now, B is on the floor. So, 
for b uh b squared is we want to find out when b hits the floor what's its velocity so v is equal to u squared plus 2as so it starts at zero uh starts from rest we're told it starts it's released from rest so v squared is equal to plus 2as well it's acceleration we found there so v squared by the time it hits the floor if it travels that distance now again is a little bit of a trap it's point uh, 24.5 centimeters but we're given um we have to convert it to meters or yes to meters so that gives us v about one meter per second okay so then a now so s is equal to ut plus a half at squared so we're saying that and this is where of course they never give me any explanation in this but a b will be on the floor in contact with the floor while a moves up that extra bit and then moves back down to the point where the string is taut so that will its total distance will be zero because it'll move up and back down okay it's u um so it's initial speed so because we now know the speed at which v hit, b hits the floor is this 0.98 then a has because they're connected at that point a has to be traveling at that speed as well so we know the initial speed now of a when b hits the floor and it's that and then we know um the the acceleration of a uh, minus g sine alpha which is that uh that force there and because that is the only acceleration of a at this point so that that is a deceleration of a as it moves up so a looking at a now okay so looking at a a no longer has a tension anymore because this string now is slack so you can ignore the tension because it doesn't exist anymore because b is on the floor it's no longer pulling a so a just has this mg sine theta or sine alpha so that's its force that is pulling it back that is the the force that is slowing that down so it's starting a has a u which is um one meter per second roughly 0.98 yeah it's equal to 0.98 there's no tension no force the only thing it the force acting on it is this mg sine alpha now which is slowing it down on its kind of it's free free moving up here with, with its momentum so you have your u which is 0.98 its initial speed as it travels unfettered by the string acceleration then is equal to minus mg well minus g sine alpha and it's so we want to find the distance well the distance that it's traveling is net zero so it's going to go up here and then it's going to go back down to where it was so it's going to peter out its momentum then go back down to the point at which the string is taut again and then that b will no longer be in contact with the floor then because it'll start it'll start pulling b back up so that's why s is zero because we want it to go up and back down so um we have this initial speed by t and half g sine alpha, alpha. so that's your your deceleration of a due to it's basically due to its um due to its weight so that gives you the time so that's the time that b remains in contact with the floor a third of a second and the reason for that is so how we found it was b hits the floor we find out the last speed its final speed when it hits the floor we know that a and b are the string is taut so b has pulled a along at that same speed so the so b hits the floor it's no longer moving anymore a keeps moving at that initial now it's initial speed for this 
purposes of this exercise, the, ex the accelerate deceleration of A, there's no, um, there is no tension anymore. So we just have this um, deceleration here. This allows us to find, and then we're saying that it's moving up. So it's moving from the, the point which is B has hit the floor and the string is just no longer taut, moves up a bit with the string now slack, and then moves back down to the same point at which the string becomes taut again and starts to pull B. So that means its total net distance is zero. So by putting that in, we get the time that it'll take. Now that would have been a tricky question. Definitely no doubt about that. Um, f certainly for a part A. Well, I mean, you get most of the marks for acceleration of B and I would say this one challenged people. And part B, surprisingly, was the easy bit there. Okay, so let's have a look at the collisions question. Um, yeah, this one is fine. I think this is a standard two balls clocking into each other. And I don't think this would have caused too much problems. A lot of students would have done many of these um, in previous papers. <clears throat> so, simple collision. I think the thing to remember here is the signs. Don't slip up. Make sure your signs are, you, you choose a direction. So let's say that that's the positive direction. A is moving in a positive direction. So U of A is equal to 3U and U of B is equal to minus U. Just be strict on that then you're actually told that they were reversed by the collision direction of motion so that's an interesting one and that gives you a clue as to why this extra inequality is there and uh, the coefficient of restitution is e so you find the speed in terms of u and e of each sphere after the collision that's pretty simple now in terms of your principle of conservation of momentum and your usual nil so that gives you now you're told that they were reversed by the collision which means so the velocity of a um is now going to be in that direction so it's going to be negative so because that's negative you put in your equation in terms of u and e for the speed after the collision and you can say that that has to be less than zero and that will pop out this bit part of the of the inequality that e has to be bigger than an eighth so in other words e has to be bigger than an eighth to ensure that they're traveling in opposite directions reversed after the collision so that's giving you that that would have been the more difficult one a lot of people might have missed that one but the more standard way standard inequality that results is okay subsequently b goes off hits a wall and comes back and the usual question, and this would be fairly standard, after B rebounds from all, there is a further collision between A and B. So in other words, after the collision, we know that A reverses direction, just like B does. So A is merrily moving along here at a slower speed than probably uh, it started with. It's moving along here. B does this bashing into the wall, but we it's still going to be able to catch up and have a further collision later at some point with A. And by using inequalities, you can ensure that you get this. E has to be less than a quarter. And that's probably the standard one that everybody be used to getting, you know? And usually if you're saying there has to be a further collision, that's what triggers your inequality. And that gives you your E there. And the other E, which you not normally asked for, would have been given by this. The fact that they're saying that they're the directions are, are reversed. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. Um, yeah, so. Yeah, uh, where is that? That is, yeah, so. This gives you the, okay, so this was what I worked out for V1. Um, so V, V1 and V2. So now, so you have to make sure that you call, so you have a U for A and a V for A. So this would be the collision um, after the A and B collide, that's your velocity. 
Now, for B, ball B, you have to consider calling uh, call new velocity again after it hits the wall. So consider that as well. And it's important that you label that as a new one so you don't get confused. So then your situation is you have ball A moving in this direction because we've been told it does, that it reverses direction, um, at a speed U, 80 minus 1 over 3. This one, after it hits the wall, and you've included a coefficient of restitution for that wall, which is, you're told, is a half. Okay. So after all that, you have this guy moving at u, 4e plus 1 over 6. Now, the usual thing, if 